1964, I took a team behind the Iron Curtain. First time a pro team was ever, t ever there. And this is my team. So we helped a lot. We gave clinics and so forth and so on. I had Tom Gola, Casey Jones, Oscar Robertson, and Bob Cousy as my guards. My forwards were Tom Heinsohn, Jerry Lucas, and Bob Pettit. And my center was Bill Russell. So we, you know, did what we wanted as far as winning and so forth and so on. But the main thing was they saw what the NBA was all about, even in those days. And by virtue of the fact that we gave these clinics in different countries, uh, that was the forerunner of the popularity of the NBA. And then when you got uh, the right leadership in the NBA to carry it, you know, like David Stern and his group, they did it. Any way in the world you can pick your all-time team? Can't do it. No way? No. Yeah. You really can't do it because uh, uh, they're so close. Uh, I did it the other day for uh, Sports Illustrated. I think I picked 12. That's the only way you can do it. Is well, I'd like 12. to hear you 12. Or well, if I can, if I can think of them now offhand, uh, I had uh, Russell and Jabbar as my centers. My forwards, I had. Dr. J, Larry Bird. Uh, I think I had Baylor and Pettit. So that's how many. That's six. That's six. Uh, and then I had as a swing man, I had Havlicek at seven. Then I had uh, Kuzi, Magic, Michael Jordan. Uh, Oscar and West, those are my, my guys. I'm not taking anything away from any other players because I also put in there, I don't know how I did it, was Barkley. I had him in there. Then I had, a, I, had <clears throat> I had trouble keeping out a guy who should be in there eventually someday. It would be Carl Malone. There's just no way to, to stop. And you could say it's uh, different eras. But the guys I mentioned could play today. I mean, Bob Pettit was a big 6'9". Elgin Baylor was a quick, strong forward. He was only 6'5", but he played like 6'8", 6'9". Oscar Robinson, 6'5", Jerry West, 6'4". I mean, Cousy, 6'2". They weren't uh, like people think of guys 20 some odd years ago or 30 years ago as being little people. They weren't little people. I have this theory that those great Celtics teams of yours kept pro basketball in the headlines during the 50s and the 60s, and then along came Julius Irving to give the game a shot in the arm they needed in the 70s. Suddenly, Boston gets Larry Bird, the Lakers get Magic Johnson, and then a superstar like Michael Jordan comes along, and suddenly the league has been uh, catapulted into a, a higher level. Those people did a lot for basketball, didn't they? Well, I agree with you in part. There have been very few athletes in all sports that are great and at the same time sell tickets. Russell sold some tickets. Chamberlain sold some tickets, especially when they, when they dueled each other. Uh, Cousy. But a lot of other great players didn't sell tickets. Believe it or not, Bill Bradley sold tickets. Ernie Di Gregorio, when he came out of Providence, he sold tickets. Say, sure, Dr. J, Michael Jordan, Magic, Bird, they sell tickets. But you could maybe name three or four others that sold tickets. The other guys were great players, but they didn't sell any tickets.